but most of you have no business looking at a daily goal. In fact, a daily goal screws you. Welcome back to the Millennial Dentist Podcast, a podcast all about working smarter, not harder. Pushing dentists to go beyond dental school dentistry and build the practice of your dreams. Here is your host, the millennial dentist himself, Dr. Sully Sullivan. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the uh, Millennial Dentist Podcast. Super excited to be recording today. You know, it's funny. If you're watching this on YouTube, which I'm telling y'all, go to YouTube, watch it. There's more. We're doing more with video. And um, very soon, we're going to start doing some live some live action, which I'm excited about uh, doing some live stream. I want to have like, I know I've mentioned this before, but I want to have like a a happy hour show once a week. So we'll see if that actually comes to fruition, but we're close. The studio is done. What you also may notice is that my lighting is fixed. We got lighting up in the ceiling now. It's really kind of all coming together. So I'm excited about that. Hope you're having a great day though. Um, really fun episode today. We're going to talk about priority scheduling, get into some of the nitty gritties of scheduling. I've had two calls today, and on both those calls, I was talking with dentists who are at full capacity, meaning they are booked out for the next month. They've been booked out, and their production is stagnant. And so what I'm finding and seeing is that it's it's crazy how we think we need more cases sometimes. We think we need whatever it is, but a lot of times the missing link to us having a bigger month is not more cases. It's not more money that people need. It's that our schedule is a limiting factor. So we'll talk about that. Before we jump into the scheduling aspect of things, um, I do want to, I'm super excited about this part too. Um, we've, we've basically virtually sold out for the 3D Growth Summit in May in Nashville. Maybe 20, 30 seats left. So if that's something you want to commit to, get on that quickly. But we are excited that we're going to be live streaming the event. So um, you can buy live stream tickets um, they're very, very, very inexpensive. I think they're like three forty nine, um, and you can live stream, get the recording in the live stream, so you can stay tuned no matter where you are. So if, if you can't make the commitment to be there in person, um, you want to, you know, even get your team to watch with you on those two days, Thursday and Friday. I think it's May second and third. Um, but check out the live stream three d dentist dot com for that. So let's dive into this. So you know, the reality is, is that. Like I mentioned, our schedule ultimately becomes kind of the gatekeeper of our success. And for those people, what I what I will find is people will think, oh, to produce more dentistry, I need to go level up and learn a higher skill set. So now all of a sudden they've got these skill sets where they can place implants, they can do root canals, they can do adult orthodontics, they can do cosmetic dentistry, whatever it is that they learn how to do. But the, but the challenge is that they don't haven't set up their schedule in a way to prioritize those procedures to maximize their production. And so what happens is, is if I just leave it to my schedule, my scheduling coordinator to fill my schedule, it's naturally going to get filled with the things that are, that prioritize the most stuff. So a common question I ask a lot of times is if, if you had a patient walk in today and they needed four hours worth of dentistry, like a whole morning's worth of dentistry, they were ready to pay cash. Money wasn't the issue. When could you get them in? And I asked that question to you as the listener, and what I imagine most of you are saying is, some of you are like, well, next week or this week. But my assumption is, is that most likely what you mean, and you probably get a laugh out of it, is that you're either going to move patients, work through lunch, work late, get there early, or you're going to sacrifice your day off, and you're going to come in and get the dentistry done. Now, I'm not saying that I wouldn't hustle or do the same thing. What I will tell you is that I don't think that's a sustainable model for growth. So what I mean by that is, is that it's one thing to do that once, but if you start coming in on all your Fridays that you're supposed to either be with your family, shoot hobbies, maybe working on the business, that ultimately bigger things suffer. And we'll do it for the, the, so the other part that bothers me about this is where do we stop that? So like, is it, if it's a $10,000 treatment plan, I'll come in. What if it's an 8,000? What if it's a 6,000? What if it's a 4,000? Like, where do we draw the line or the number? And in essence, we all have a number. Like, there's a number that I will basically come in for on whatever day off and do it. But the challenge is, is wherever that number stops, there's going to be a margin or amount of dentistry that you're, 
you're not willing to do, but that's still more productive than the stuff that's on your schedule. So maybe that gap is um, 2,000 to 4,000, meaning the majority of your stuff on your schedule isn't $2,000 with the dentistry and one appointment, but you're not willing to come in and work late or work your lunch for that. And so that margin from 2,000, that delta from 2,000 up to 4,000 or whatever the number is that you're willing to do that now becomes dentistry that gets pushed out. That's problematic. So what I, what, what my kind of, what I like to do is one is I've got to start prioritizing or setting templates. And, and what I'm going to do today is, and this is again, why I want you to get online or watch this is because I'm going to share my screen and show you kind of what our, our schedule looks like templated out for our doctors so that you can get a good idea of kind of the way that we're doing things um, in our practice. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up here. Actually, you can see it full screen. But this is an, an example of our, our four, our, our, this is all five doctors. We got Dr. Sarah, Dr. Amber, my dad, Dr. David, our periodontist, and myself. And then we have our consults and our shared, shared assistant driven column. So now again, some crazy fundamentals. And in this, this episode, I'm not going to go into all the details, but we run one doctor, one column. So if you listen to this enough, this is something that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be new to you, but I can go into more of the details on another episode, but ultimately we run one doctor, one column. Now, most of you would say, well, if I go to one column, my production will go down. That's, I don't know how you could even do that. Now, let me give you some examples. Sarah, six months out of school, averaging $75,000 in production, one column. Amber, two years out of school, averaging around eighty dollars to $90,000 in production, one column. They're primarily restorative dentists. Amber can play single implants, and then and Sarah does endo. But relatively speaking, these are these are... It's not like they have these crazy clinical skill sets. And what I will argue is they outproduce most dentists, most general dentists working one column. You go to my dad, one column produces $150,000, $160,000 in a month. David, one column, around $100,000 a month. And then I'll throw up you know, some big numbers as well. So my point is, is that we tend to equate busyness with production. Busyness with the production. That's the challenge, is that in order to produce more, I have to do more. And so the only way to, to produce more is either to see more patients via either in another column or work more days. And so once you hit that capacity, which is where most of you listeners probably are, unless you're a startup trying to grow into that, you're at a capacity where like, if you look back last month, your schedule was full. The only way to do more dentistry in that same period of time, seeing the same number of patients is to do more profitable dentistry on those people. That's where the prioritization comes into play. Now, so step one is we start with our time blocks, right? So here I have three hours, here I have two hours, and then another two hour, and then a one hour non-filling. So what we do is we prioritize the dentistry in chunks of time. So instead of allowing this to get filled with just whatever, as long as we want, this has to be one appointment that lasts three hours. So naturally what happens is as the schedule gets booked out, this two hour may fill, these one hours will fill, but this three hours tends to stay open. As we approach or as we start to get closer, ideally, hopefully we're looking and treatment planning and finding this three hour chunk of time so that I may be booked out for two months with one hour blocks, but I can see somebody for a three hour block next week. Now, let me use an example of where I would then make changes. Let's say that my template is blocked just like this. For Sarah, she's got an endo block, then these two one-hour blocks. Let's say that what I'm finding is that Sarah is, she's hit her max, she's plateaued with her production. I think that most, most consultants and coaches are leading us astray when they tell you to have a daily goal. Hot take here. I think that a daily goal is probably the worst thing that can happen for the dentist. Now, what I do believe is that daily goals may be a good thing for hygienists because their skill set is so limited. They can't make up for getting behind because they only have so many procedures that they have within the scope of what they can do. Now, you take a dentist. If that dentist does only crowns and no fillings, he will do more dentistry or she will do more dentistry. So now, all of a sudden, 
based off how big of a scope of dentistry I have, my time slot should be bigger. So let's take someone that does implants. Well, now all of a sudden, I could do two implants in two hours. That equates to way more production than fillings and crowns in that regard during that time. And so if I can, if I have a procedure that can catch me up, I could go a whole day doing no dentistry, but then have one good day and that makes up for the two days. So I think that at, from a baseline fundamental standpoint, dentists should at, at minimum, the only thing they should look at is a weekly goal. And then based off your skill set, maybe we actually go up to a monthly goal. Or we'll use me as an example when it comes to the main procedure that I do now is hybrids, which are a $24,000, $25,000 in arch case. And so in theory, I could take off a month and then have one month where I do 12 arches, 12 arches at, we'll use 20 grand because that's, well, no, well 12, I could, I could do, let's do easy math for me. Let's say I do um, 15 arches at 20 grand. I mean, I could do this, but y'all, I'm trying to speak, talk, think, and do this all at the same time. I know that becomes confusing. Let's say I do, let's say I have a, a killer month. I do 12 arches times $25,000. That's 300 grand. And so if my goal was 150, I literally could have done, done nothing the month before, had one big month and I make up. Well, then you look at it in a, a quarterly goal, everything falls into place. So I hope this is helpful because to me, and that's an extreme example but most of you have no business looking at a daily goal. In fact, a daily goal screws you because the dentist that looks at a daily goal wants to rob Peter to pay Paul. They want to they wanna get it now. They want to do same-day dentistry. They want to, um, you know, add something on from hygiene or whatever to do, to do same-day dentistry. They want to squeeze in that extra filling so they get over their production goal. Our team gets trained that we have to meet that goal that day because if I don't meet that goal, I get behind in where I want to be on the monthly production. And that's just wrong. That's just wrong. So what I'm advocating is that at minimum, we move to more of a weekly goal. So now that my template of blocks can be sent off that, knowing that I could have a bad Monday and a bad Tuesday, but if I have a great Wednesday and Thursday, everything sets up. We still meet the weekly goal. And those of you that have even bigger skill sets that do implants, grafting procedures, some cosmetic stuff, you know, you, you're not... A $10,000 day is very possible for you. I would argue that you're even better looking at a monthly goal because that mindset of getting down to the day and the hour is, is crazy. And so one of the other things that fundamentally we do that's very different is the one hour minimum appointment. No appointment in our office is less than one hour. And look, the proof is in the pudding. In our office, one doctor, one chair, one hour minimum appointments. And they and and our associate dentists do who are great dentists by the way, but again not like these crazy robust skill sets easily average around eighty thousand dollars a month. That should tell you that there is another way to do this than getting on a hamster wheel and running multiple columns. That is where that that is where the that is how you, I mean it's 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 amazing, frankly speaking. So. Kind of wrap things up because I'm trying to keep these in shorter episodes. I hope this this makes you start to think differently. And then my assumption is, is there should be some level of follow-up questions. And then if you're already listening to this or kind of already in the cycle of things, I hope it gives some clarity or maybe it re reaffirms some of the things that you're doing. Um, but one doctor, one chair, one hour minimum appointments. We We prioritize our schedule to fit the goals that we want to fit. The best way to do this is by hour chunks of time so that we start we start blocking three, four, two hour chunks of time. Yeah, and then the reality is, is that I will be booked out for some procedures for a couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months, but then there are certain things that I will be able to, I will make sure that I get into place. And then once I get to capacity, once I find out, hey, man, I don't have a three hour block for three weeks, guess, what's get, guess what gets added to my schedule? I go back and I find the, the, the three one-hour blocks and I make that a three-hour block. So I'm constantly looking to my schedule to optimize my schedule to the point that no matter what I'm doing, I'm going to keep producing more until I hit some law of kind of like where I'm at. And so some of you, I guarantee you, you your schedules and your productions have plateaued, not because of the dentistry you're doing, but because of the way that you're scheduling. So go look at your schedules, 
and uh, follow up with any questions. Hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you next time. Work smarter, not harder. Thank you for listening to The Millennial Dentist. Visit us online at millennialdentist.com. 